Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs. Today we are going to be completing Monteverde from Hack the Box. This is a virtual machine that is going to teach us some Windows enumeration, uh, SMB enumeration. So I'm expecting to be detecting some brute forcing for SMB in our security onion intrusion detection system here. But we also will learn a little bit about Azure AD credentials, which is interesting. So let's go ahead and get started here by running an NMAP scan on this machine. I already have my Kali Linux connected to Hack the Box VPN. So I'll just say NMAP SV and I say C. Let's make sure that it's Verbos. So that way we can see the results in real time. So right away, as you can see, we can see Windows ports, DNS389, which is LDAP here, and 636. So we know this is a Windows box by just looking at these ports here, even before this scan is complete. But while it's running, let's go and check out our intrusion detection system here. This should show us if there's any alerts right now that are firing. Uh, we should be able to see what those ones are. As you can see, in the last 10 minutes, which is right now, we see ET scans here. So if we drill down as to what's going, what's going on, this is NMAP running, and we're able to see that we're going to port 1521, and that's an Oracle SQL, SQL port that we're looking for. And we matched on this rule here, that's just looking for the flow. Uh, it's looking at five within 60 seconds. So we saw five scans uh, with a flag of the scene scan in 60 seconds. So because of that, this rule fires. So this is a very th low threshold, five times, and it triggered. So now that we know that this is getting caught, let's go back to our results. We should now have the full NMAP scan for just the top 1,000 ports here. Again, confirming that this is a domain. Uh, the machine looks like a domain controller with LDAP running and Active Directory looks like it's running here. We can start by just looking at the common Windows methodology, which is in this case, let's run a Noom for Linux to see if we can find some users since we now already know this is a domain con controller. Let's just run straight a Noom for Linux here and see if we can find any users, shares and things like that just from a Noom for Linux. We can check Security Onion to see if a Noom for Linux is already there. This might be it. All right, it looks like we are finding stuff. Scroll up, Sally Morgan. Okay, so this too is already paying dividends here. Let's go all the way to the bottom, see if we can get a clean list. There we go. So from this list here that we're getting, we can save it and clean it up so we can just get the usernames only. I also see Azure admins here which is interesting. So we have Azure admins, administrator, mhop is an Azure ad admin, and also this ADD, which I think is the default Azure credential. So by just looking at this, I'm already thinking the only one of the ways that people would end up with an Azure admins group, that's also part of their domain is because they are syncing with Azure. That means that they have to set up a configuration file or a configuration on the system that has credentials for the local system in order for it to sync with the Azure credentials as well. So that's interesting when we don't usually see this. So that definitely takes my interest. But we have a list of users here. Okay, so and I went ahead and I saved all the users in this file called users.txt. Let me just show you. I cleaned that file up and then I just ended up with some users. Users like root and bin and none might be useless, but they're all from the list that we found. Now that I have a list of users, the next step is to use Metasploit in order for us to maybe password spray or maybe brute force. One of the ways that we can brute force is try to see if any of these users didn't change their password, so they are reusing their username as the password. If they, are, if they are doing that, we can just try and brute force. Or we can pass common passwords as well. So let's start my Metasploit here. So MSF console. Then we'll bring in a Metasploit module for going after SMB and spraying for passwords or maybe brute forcing. Okay, so here we need to use an auxiliary scanner. So we're using auxiliary, then scanner. 
SMB, SMB login. That's the one that we'll be using info. Okay, so we need to set up a few of these values here. For example, look for all the ones that are required. Our host is required, so let's set it. So we're setting our our host or remote host to that value. Okay, let's see all the options. The boss is true. Use a pass file. So set user pass file to user dot text. Users dot text. Okay. Then the next other option is user as pass. This will try the username as the same as the password. So I'll set that one to true. True. Okay. Now set detect any domain to true. Just in case the domain is required. Okay, so here I'm seeing that my user file is not set. So I need to set that. Set user file the text. Let's see. Okay. So once I'm happy that all the values are set, I can now say run. And it's trying all the passwords. And it's also going to try the same username and password for the user. So this might be a little bit. While it's doing that, let's go and check. We are brute forcing here. So let's look in the last three minutes and see if we can find. Yeah, after it's after it's running for a little bit, we should be able to refresh here and see if we will find something. All right, it's going. Let me scroll up, make sure that we didn't miss anything. I'm looking on the left side here for anything that says plus, like success. I'm also intentionally generating more traffic here so that our intrusion detection system at least sees something. There we go. Unusual port scan traffic or infection. Let's drill down into that. What's really happening? So it's things that we have an infection. So the rule that fired here says that any traffic, TCP traffic com coming from home to any, any, um, and we have some information. So it's kind of hard to see here. We can follow the rule link near, all the way near the bottom here to imaging threats. And when we go here, we see that we have an alert for TCP traffic coming from home to any, on any port, uh, I mean, on NIP 443, 445. And as you can see here, it's just this is just a message. But what we are looking for here is a flow to the server, so client to server. And we want to see a flag of a SYN uh, or SYN arc. Then the threshold here, we want to be for both direction, uh, is going to be a count of 70 connections in 60 seconds. So if you see a bunch of SYN traffic going to this port, 70 times in 60 seconds that's unusual that's why we're getting this alert here and i you can also ask chat gpt it will also explain the same exact thing so if you're like yeah i forgot like how did i know that this flag s12 means that uh only apply to sin arc traffic that's the flag 12 in this case you can find that information but that's why we're getting caught here because we're brute forcing super fast but as you can see, I see here guest account is showing up there. Let's keep going up and see if we maybe hit another hit. Okay. So this user here had a success. And you, it looks like they reused the username and password. SA, whatever that is, that is. Okay. So because of this here, we now have a username and password. We can now um, use SMB client. To see if we can just get into the system so let's open a new tab and try to use the same credentials for smb client okay so our syntax for smb client it is smb client minus you then the domain name the name of the user then we need to give them the password after this and the share i think uh if we go back here we should be able to see uh we forgot our results we had a few shares that we saw earlier the enum for linux but now i don't remember so let's go and see if we can just go to the root i don't think it will work uh was i think there was a users bad network name 
is it users dollar sign or dollar sign users? I think it's dollar sign users or dollar or I guess users dollar sign. Okay, dear. Here's the users. So we're going to go into each users and see which ones what we can find there. Digal. So this one is empty. Let's go to the next one, M hop. Okay, we do have an Azure.xml XML file. These are usually configuration files. So get get that file. Looks like we were able to, to do that. Let's go to the other one, S Morgan. Just in case there's something there. Okay, let's get out of here and go and check our loot. Okay, so as you can see, like like I anticipated, here is a credential file. So this is a password. This one was under mhop, so we can see if we can use if we win our M and try to get in as mhop. Okay, so in our intrusion detection system, I just downloaded this mhop as your file. I'm actually able to track it down in my Elasticsearch here. I just search for Azure star to see if I can see that file. And the mget command, the get command that we just ran was able to, was seen. It wasn't seen as malicious. It was just seen that, you know, there was a file that was moved. And here's Zeek showing us that the file was indeed downloaded here using a Zeek con. So we can track down the traffic as well. But since we now have that as a password, let's use evil winrm and see if we can get in as mhop. For us to use evil winrm so that you don't see me typing here, it's evil winrm, user mega, mega bank. I put double quotes, I mean double backslashes. You, you can use one if you want, and the password. So if we hit enter here, let's see if evil winrm will get there. Yeah, we are. Let's go to the desktop. Let's see if we have um, user.text. Let's download it. I don't think we'll be able to see user.text in our intrusion detection system because this is evil WinRM. It does end-to-end -end encryption. All right. So now that we have in there as mhop, where am I? Such all. Let's see our permissions. This is just basic stuff. All right. So here we see the groups. The obvious one. The interesting one again is this Azure admins group here. We don't usually deal with that. I wonder if there's a way we can find the Azure credentials, which might be the same as the administrator. Let's do a, some searches here. Azure AD sync. That's the account for syncing Active Directory. Azure AD connect database exploit. Okay, that's VB scrapped. Azure AD attack a desync account. We'll look at those. And we'll look at this one as well. So we have a few a few things here. And this one here. Okay, yeah, this looks like it. A service account that we can connect with. So we need to read this obviously and try to understand what's going on. So I'll pause here for a second. Okay, so it looks like Azure, what it does is it needs the local administrator, the, admin, the domain administrator account in order for it to be able to bind to the domain and also for you to synchronize. So there is a way where Azure will keep the administrator credentials on the local machine in a file somewhere. There's a path that it shows in this blog post. So somebody wrote a script that will actually go and extract the contents of the file, which are encrypted text, then it will decrypt it for you. So there is a local copy of the creds and it looks like you can use this binary here, ad decrypt.zip. Let's download this and put it in our downloads folder. We need to unzip this. I'll just right click and extract here. Okay, here's ad decrypt. Dot exe. We can also use a PowerShell script, but I want to move an exe executable file using evil winrm. 
and see if I'll actually be able to get to it. So since I already have if we win RM here, what I can do is I can copy from okay, we want to copy it here. Now we need to tell if WinRM to upload this. So it will do all the work for us. So let's see if that's the case here. So we just upload it. I'm putting it in the desktop, which is kind of careless, but let's see if it works. So we just uploaded an executable file via our network. Technically, we should be able to detect this, but with encryption that is supposed to work with if WinRM, I'm not sure if it will work. I need to move both files. Uh, including the the DOL file to here. And then I need to upload it to my machine in the same folder as executable file. So I'll come back and say upload. So let's upload that. Again, I'm uploading a DOL file in my network here. Is an artifact cdc okay we need to go to program files i think i need quotes okay so we need to go to the microsoft azure okay this all this in quotes then in here i need to go to bin okay now that we're in this folder, we can go ahead and run our AD sync. So, so it's going to be in C users M hope such desktop. Okay. So from the right folder, if I hit enter here, notice what just happened because I ran it from in here. And it decrypted the credentials for the administrator in this case. So here's the administrator, the domain, and the password. So now that we have the administrator, let's open a new tab and use evil WinRM again with those credentials and see if we can get the root flag. We can say evil WinRM, let's go to this IP address, the user administrator this time, and that password that we just found. Let's see if evil WinRM works. If it does, it's game over. Am I? We're in as administrator. Let's see if we can get to the desktop. Dir. And there is the root flag. So we were able to complete everything that we were working on here. And let's check to see if we got any executable files, like exe files. I already searched here. There's a file that we downloaded earlier i was wondering if we will be able to see it in here as you can see i see there was a time right here when we saw six and i believe this was the zipped file that zeke was seeing i don't think if winrm will send a user agent but we'll be surprised let's see well i lied <laughs> if winrm here is uh, the http user agent ruby winrm client so if you wanted to hunt for these events that we just did here today, you'll be able to see every time WinRN did something. The data might be encrypted, but at least you should be able to see that it's being used in your environment. Because we do have a user agent that's being set. So if you like this type of content, uh, please remember to like and subscribe. Otherwise, we just completed a machine from Hack to Box called Mente Verde. And I hope to see you next week.